Sign Machine is number one tool in Unity when it comes to managing your cameras. It allows you to blend between cameras, make the cameras smoothly follow the player, create cutscenes and more for both 2D and 3D games. First, we'll go over the two essential components we'll be using when working with Sign Machine. Then I will show you what each of the options in Virtual Camera does so you can create the right camera for your scenario. Lastly, we'll add smooth blending between the cameras and add some noise. To download the Sign Machine package, go to your package manager, so window, package manager, then go to the Unity registry packages and search for Sign Machine. Select the package and just hit install. The two essential components I was talking about before are the Sign Machine Brain and the Sign Machine Virtual Camera. The Sign Machine Brain has to be placed on the main camera object and should be just one in the scene. It decides where the real camera should be based on the positions of virtual cameras and it also applies blending. Without it, the camera wouldn't change its position at all. On the other hand, the Sign Machine Virtual Camera gives information to the Sign Machine Brain about the virtual camera's position, the FOV, priority, the object it is following and some additional info and using the brain component we can then blend between the virtual cameras. I have just created an empty object on which I have added the camera component and I will add the sign machine brain as well. And this main camera that we have shouldn't be under any parent because the sign machine brain will decide on its own which camera it should be following and then we can add the virtual cameras, so again create new empty object and add the virtual camera components to it. So right now as we have just one virtual camera, the sign machine brain will be always following this one, so if I go into the scene and I am playing the game, I can just select the virtual camera and we will see that the sign machine camera is moving with it. Let's now go over the sign machine virtual camera component, the first thing we see is the status, so if we are rendering what the camera sees or not because later as we have multiple of them, we will be rendering just what one camera sees. We have field of view of the camera, we have some transitions that we will be using later and the things that I will be focusing on mostly is the body and the aim where you can actually decide how the camera should be moving and which objects it should be following. Let's first go through all of the aim options that we have and to use these we need to assign the look at transform, so at which transform it should be looking, in my case that's the character controller. Let's start with the first one, which is the composer. This one will just try to be looking constantly at the object. So as I'm moving with the camera, you can see it's also applying some easing to it and I can really move it wherever I want and it will still be looking at it. The same way that if I move with the player, yep, the camera is still looking at it. And if you don't want to see all of these guides that you have here, you can just untick this checkbox. We can apply some offset to the tracked object, so maybe it's higher or maybe it's lower, more to the left, more to the right so on, can also apply some look ahead time, so as I start moving with the player it will actually be looking in the direction that it is moving, not directly at the player, which can also be quite useful in some cases. We can adjust the damping, so if I put it to zero, it will be just looking at it without any smoothing, but if I make the damping greater, it will just add some more smoothing. And we can also adjust the boundaries of this blue and the red box, so if the player ever gets into the red box, it will just quickly try to get out of it. And the way that we can adjust it is using the soft zone width and the height. And we can also add some dead zone. So do it like this. So now if the player is anywhere inside of this gray square, it's not going to move at all. Next aiming option we have is the group composer, which works really the same way as composer, just for multiple objects. So I've created an empty object, which will be the sign machine target group. So let's add the component to it where we can just add all of the objects that should be followed by the group composer. Now let's add a cube. So I will select the composer group. I will add those two targets. The first one will be the cube. The second one will be the player. And back in the virtual camera, I will just assign the composer group as the look at object. So now as I'm moving those two objects, all the time is trying to look at both of them at the same time, which can be especially useful if you are working on some, let's say, boxing game where you have two characters that are fighting each other and at all times you want to see both of them. Right now we cannot really see the whole objects, so this we can adjust in the sign machine target group where you can just increase the radius of each of the objects and we can also adjust the weight, so maybe we want the camera to be looking more at the player so we can just increase the weight of the character controller. 
Now as we walk around with the player, at all times it's trying to take a look at the player as well as the cube. In the group composer we have pretty much the same settings as in the composer, so let's get to the next aim option which is hard look at. So I will set the look at transform back to the player and if I move with it, you will not be surprised, it will just be directly looking at the player without any smoothing, nothing special. But the next aim option is definitely interesting, this is the POV. In this one again we have a ton of options, but what we can actually do in the game is that we can just look around, that's what POV is. So we can look around as much as you want, but the up and down is clamped, so we cannot look directly into the sky and into the ground. And all of this we can pretty much adjust using the settings here. In the options we can adjust the value range, which is the minimum and the maximum value to which we can look. We also have the speed, the acceleration, deceleration, the axis, which is affecting it. So the POV aiming option is definitely something you could directly use for your first person character controller. And the last option we have under the aim section is same as follow target, to which we actually need to assign the follow target. So let's just drag in the character controller. So now if I'm rotating with the character controller, which you can see here, it's rotating the camera as well. And that's all for the aiming that we can do with the camera. So now I will set it to nothing and we can get to the body, which will actually make it move. So let's start the third person follow. So now as I'm moving with the player, you can see the camera is moving with it all the time. We cannot really see much as we are in the ground. So we can adjust this with the shoulder offset. Just put it a bit higher. Now the camera is moving with the player. We can as well add some damping. And this third person following, we can combine, let's say, with the composer. So we can go to the aim, select composer. So now the camera is looking at the player from the top. This obviously doesn't look the best for a third person controller. So we can adjust the offsets as needed. The next body option we have is framing transposer. Where again, we can see this blue and the red rectangle. And as we are moving with it, the camera will try to flow the player at all times. We can give it some offset. And again, if you want, we can combine it with the composer. And if I set some offset to the composer, now we are looking at the player from the back and it is all smoothing. But still, you can see that sometimes it's cutting a bit, which is because the camera is being updated likely in update and the physics of the player are being updated in fixed update. So the way that we can fix this is really simple. Just select the sign machine camera where we have the sign machine brain. We can see that the update method was set at the smart update. So it's kind of trying to decide on its own when it should be updating. But the best way to set it for us is the fixed update. So now if you try moving, we can see that all of the camera movements are nice and smooth. The other option we have for the body is again nothing complicated. Hard lock to target, which will just lock to target and move with it. Now we cannot really see much from the camera because it's really in the grounds so again we would have to set some aiming and that stuff but you get the idea. The next option for the body we have is orbital transposer which as you could probably guess will be rotating around an orbit and to actually see the user we can again set some offset on the y axis maybe even some offset on the z and now just by moving my mouse I can rotate around the player so the camera is rotating around it it's not looking at it and this we can again easily fix by going to the aiming and just say to composer. And now just by moving my mouse, I can rotate around the user, I can walk around as usual and yeah, overall it feels pretty nice. This is a camera you could use for some character customization. So when the user is creating the character, he can just look around as he wants. The next one we have is a tracked dolly where we can actually specify a path across the camera should go. But this is something I will cover in the next video, which will be about timelines and some post-processing. So let's get to the last body option, which is a transposer. And this is again another option that will help us to follow the player or some other objects. And in the binding mode, we have a ton of options that you can experiment with yourselves. Let's now take a look at the blending between different virtual cameras, which is one of the main features of Sign Machine. So I have still the main character controller, as I had it before. I have added a weapon inside of his hands and we will be creating just a simple aiming animation which won't really be animation, it will be just transferring between those two cameras. So one camera is the first person camera which is in the player's eyes and I will just copy this one, move it here so that it's looking at the weapon, that seems to look good. And we don't only have to be blending the position but we can blend all of the other virtual camera properties as well. 
so maybe one camera should be trying to aim at something the other one should not be or we can change the foe which seems pretty good for the weapon so just make it zoom in a bit to the aim camera i will add some noise so that it's kind of moving from side to side so it looks like the player is actually holding the gun in his hands for the noise we have a ton of different profiles i'm going to use the handheld normal mild and then we can set the amplitude and the frequency okay so we have those two cameras configured now but what do we do next well we'll be blending with the cameras using the priority so on start i can set the priority of the aim camera to 5 and leave the priority of the first person camera on 10 we can try playing the game so now we have still just one camera that's rendering what we are seeing but we have two virtual cameras between which we can blend so now i can set the aim camera and i can set the priority to let's say 15 so now because this has higher priority it has transitioned from the first camera to this one and we can see the field of view changed and it's also applying some noise so it's moving up and down left and right and if i set the priority of the aim camera again something lower than 10 so to 5 it's going to move back to the player's hands we may want to adjust the speed of the animation or add some easing so for this we can go to the sign machine camera where we have the sign machine brain and here we can see the custom blends asset so we can just hit create asset and here we can specify transitions between different cameras so i have two transitions from the camera a to camera b and from camera b to camera a so i will just hit plus and plus select the cameras so the first one can be from the first person to the aim camera and the second one the other way around because the transition both ways can be similar or it can be different that's really up to you so let's say that from the first person to the aiming it will be quite quick let's say 0.5 and from the aim camera to the first person it can take i don't know one second maybe we can add different easing so we have already ease in and out but we can try different so for this one let's do hard out and let's see so set the aim camera set the priority higher yep now it's really moving quicker and if i go back yep it seems to work well now we are blending it kind of manually by changing these numbers but it's the same as what we can do in code so I've created a new c -sharp script, which I'm going to put, let's say, to the character controller. To add reference to the virtual cameras, where we will be setting the priority, we first need to add using sign machine. So I have references for the aim camera, as well as the first person camera. And then in update, I'm just checking if we are pressing the right mouse button. If we are, then I will change the priority to the aim camera. Otherwise, I will change it back to the first person camera. So if you are aiming, the priority of the aim camera has to be higher then the priority of the first person camera and the other way around. So back in Unity, don't forget to assign those references. So we have the aim camera and the first person camera. So now if you play the game and I press the right mouse button, yep, it's transitioning to the aiming animation. We can see that it's moving a bit. And when I release it, yep, it goes back to the normal camera and I can even try pressing it multiple times while it's transitioning and everything seems to work well. So now you know how to set up the sign machine virtual camera component, so setting up the body and the aiming, so that you can really create your own customized character controllers. And this doesn't only work for character controllers, as I said, you can use it for some customization of your characters, so maybe you are looking around it, or when you have some fighting game and you want to look at the two enemies at the same time, you can use the other camera that I shown you, but if you are just looking to create first person or third person camera control with some nice easing, then sign machine is going to work as well. I also shown you how to blend between different virtual cameras so that your game feels really nice and smooth. And in the next part, I will show you how to add some post processing to your cameras. So each camera may have different post processing. We'll take a look at the timeline and much more. So let me know if you are interested in that. If you are looking to find some game developer friends or just seeking help, then feel free to check our Discord server. And if you want to support me financially and take a look at my other videos, then feel free to take a look at my Patreon. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!